Hi everyone, in this first video on optimization, I'm going to be working through this example, which is a bit of a, I want to say, classic example when starting to learn about optimization problems. And if you want to give it a try before I solve it, go ahead and press pause now. And if not, let's get started. We're told that to construct a rectangular enclosure for his chickens, Paul uses 40 meters of fencing. One side of the enclosure is built against the outside wall of his house in order to create the largest area possible. No fencing is needed if there is a wall. We're then asked what dimensions should his enclosure be for the area to be maximized. Let's see, to answer this, I'll shrink this down a bit and move it to the side. There we go. As I said in the beginning, this example is a classical optimization problem. And when we say optimizing something, it means either maximizing it or minimizing it. In this case, we need to maximize the area of Paul's enclosure. And for that, we can follow four steps that will always work with an optimization problem. The first step, step one, is to find or identify the quantity that needs to be optimized and write an expression for it in terms of the variables. Well, as we saw a minute ago, the quantity that we're trying to maximize in this case is the area of the enclosure. And to be more specific, it's a rectangular area. So how do we actually find an expression for that area and in terms of which variables? Well, to answer such a question, I like to make a sketch. And so in this case, I'll make a sketch of a rectangular enclosure, one side of which is against the wall. So let's see, imagine I'm looking at this from above. So this is a plan view. And so this is the outside wall of Paul's house and I'll hatch it. Okay, that's the wall. There we go. And I'll just write house here, just to be clear. And I'll go ahead and say that the rectangular enclosure looks something like this. So it leaves the wall and I form a rectangle like so. Now the area that we're trying to maximize is this area here that I'm hatching in green right now. There we go. And looking at this sketch now, I find it far easier to see what it is we're actually dealing with. And so this green area here is nothing more than the area of this rectangle. So if I go ahead and call this base X, which would be at the top here as well, that's x again, and I call the height of this rectangle right there, I'll call it y, then this rectangle's area, which we can go ahead and call a, would be equal to the base times the height, so that would be x times y. And that's the expression for the quantity we're trying to optimize. So I can go ahead and write a equals to x times y. Done. And in fact, I could go ahead and box that. There we go. And I could add here quantity, quantity, to optimize, optimize. Now, in this case, of course, we're trying to maximize it. So I could also add in parentheses max in this case, okay? And what we notice here is that the area is therefore a function of two variables, x and y. And so how do we find its maximum? Well, as it stands, we can't we're going to need to get rid of one of the two variables, x or y, for us to be able to work with this function. And with that objective in mind, we need to work through step two. Now, in step two of an optimization problem, the job is to find the constraint. Not only that, we need to find an expression for the constraint written in terms of the same variables that we used in step one. So those would be x and y in this case. And when I say constraint, think of it as what's the limitation? Or in this case, what's stopping Paul from making this enclosure the size of five football fields? Or even the size of a whole country? Well, for that, as we read through the question again, we quickly find that the constraint is the fact that Paul only uses 40 meters of fencing. So that's the constraint. But how do we write that in terms of the variables x and y? Well, looking back at the sketch I made before to visualize it all, we quickly realize that 40 has to be equal to x, plus y plus x, or 2x plus y. And that's the expression we're after. And so the constraint for this optimization problem is the fact that 2x plus y equals to 40. Done. And again, I'll go ahead and box that result. And I'll write constraint next to it. There we go, constraint. Now remember, I said a minute ago that to find the maximum of this function, we need to get rid of one of the two variables, x or y. And in fact, that's exactly what step three is. So I'll just write step three. In this step, we need to eliminate one of the two variables inside the expression we have for the quantity we wish to optimize. So in this case, A. 
And to do that, we're going to use the expression we have for the constraint. Here's what I mean. Starting from the expression 2x plus y equals to 40, we can rearrange this to make either x or y the subject. Looking at this, it seems a little easier to make y the subject. Indeed, if I subtract 2x from both sides of this expression, it quickly turns into y equals to 40 minus 2x. There we go, and I'm using blue to remind you that this is the constraint. And now that I have an expression for y written in terms of x, I go back to the equation we have here and replace y by 40 minus 2x. In other words, I can go ahead and state that a is equal to x times 40 minus 2x, where to be clear, all I've done is replace y by 40 minus 2x. Now distributing the x across this pair of parentheses, we quickly see that the area is a function of x, and in fact we could write a of x, and it's equal to 40x minus 2x squared. And that's our third step done. The expression we have for the quantity we're trying to optimize is now written in terms of one variable only, in this case x. In other words, this is now a function like any other function we're used to working with. And now that we have that, we can move on to step four. And in step four, we optimize. So in this case, we find the maximum value of this function. Now, given this function is a quadratic function, if we really wanted to, we could of course sketch the parabola and find the maximum point on it. But since we're seeing this as part of our calculus course, I'll go ahead and use the methods we've seen for finding any maximum or minimum point on a curve. So let's go. The first thing we need to do is differentiate this function. And if I just copy that function, we have a of x, which equals to 40x minus 2x squared. We differentiate this using the power rule, so that would be a prime or a dash of x, which equals to 40 minus 4x. And to find any maximum or minimum point, the first thing we need to do is solve a dash of x equals to zero. In other words, we need to solve 40 minus 4x equals to zero. Adding 4x to each side of that equation leads us to 40 equals to 4x, and finally dividing both sides by 4 leads us to 10 equals to x, or rewriting that from right to left, x equals to 10. Done. Now what this result tells us is that when x equals to 10, a of x reaches a stationary point. And although it's quite clear that this stationary point is a maximum, indeed it's clear because this parabola would be concave down so it must have a maximum, at times it won't be so obvious. And so we'll need to check whether we're dealing with a maximum or a minimum. And one way of doing that would be to study the sign of the derivative, that's what we have here, on either side of x equals to 10. And I could quickly do that here. I have a very small sign table, something looking like this. There we go, x. And here I could say a dash of x. And we're looking at the sign on either side of x equals to 10. So we know that a dash of x equals to 0 when x equals to 10. We've just shown that. But what about for x values less than 10? Well, let's see. You can take any random value of x less than 10. And to make it easy, let's make it 0. Well, if x were 0, a dash of x would be 40 minus 0. So that would be positive. And so I could write a little plus sign in my sign table. And for any value of x greater than 10, again, make it easy, let's say we took 100, then a dash of x would be 40 minus 400, which would be negative 360, which is of course negative, so we can write that here. And since the derivative a dash goes from positive to zero to negative, the function itself, and I'll just show this underneath here, the function itself, a of x, must be increasing reaches a maximum when x equals to 10, and then decreases, which confirms that at x equals to 10, a of x reaches a maximum value. Furthermore, when x equals to 10, y would be equal to 40 minus 2 times 10. And we could go ahead and write that here, y would be equal to 40 minus 2 times 10. In other words, y is equal to 20. Done. Those are the dimensions the rectangular enclosure has to be, for the area to be maximized. And we could go ahead and add them on our diagram, x equals to 10, and y equals to 20. And there we have it. 
do make a note of the four steps we've just seen. Using them, we can solve every optimization problem. In this case, the four steps allowed us to find a maximum value, but they would work just as well to find a minimum value in some other problem. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.